I have to officially apologize to Derwent. <laughs> Do you remember when I went on a rant because I bought these pencil extenders? I have two. I have this one, which is a bit bigger, and I have the black one also. That's a bit smaller, and I was like, this thing sucks. It doesn't even work. It turns out if you just press a bit harder, <laughs> then it goes in. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know that it works now. I feel dumb. <laughs> Let's try with the Derwent. I'm sure it's gonna work now. It's so easy. You know, just for the dummies like me, it, it should come with a video. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right then, it works perfectly well. It's actually the perfect size. <laughs> I'm gonna try the black one, see if it works with my bigger pencils. That I don't think it's gonna work. Let's see, this, this doesn't fit in this part here, so I think that's the sign that it's not gonna work. But this one does, oh yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Just press a bit harder. Make it fit. It's normal that it's snug. That's what you want. Well, I officially apologize. I was wrong. <laughs> well, that's great news. So now what I'm trying to do is try to finish this top part. I just want to finish one area before I move on to the next one. Also, I feel like if I finish an area and then I go on to the next one, then there's less risk of smudging with my hand. I decided to bake shoe pastries for the first time and it was quite a challenge because French pastry is next level. I've been baking my own bread for a few years now and I'm trying to learn some new techniques and I've been inspired by the TV show The Great Canadian Baking Show. It's the same thing as the British version but more Canadian. So everybody there is super friendly, it's wholesome. You see talented home cooks attempting to bake some very intricate and interesting bakes. So every time I watch a show, I'm like, hmm, maybe if they can do it, I could practice and get good at some of these bakes. It's so such a nice show. Here I'm just piping the shoes. It was my first time, so I didn't know how big to make them. But I was very happy about the texture of this paste. So now you'll see a dramatic event is going to happen. I tried to push the dough in my piping bag and I dropped it on my shoes. And I was like, oh no, all this work for nothing. I'm going to have ruined my shoes. Turns out I was able to fix them. Now I'm putting a cacle on top of my shoes. It's a type of paste that I rolled very thinly and that I put in the freezer for a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And then I had to cut it in little circles, but I had no tools for that. In the recipe, they said to use cookie cutters. I don't have any, so I took a measuring cup and I did my best. <laughs> I had to first cut them out with my knife, but then as the paste thawed a little bit, the crackling would stick in my cup and they were easier to remove. But then as the paste got warmer, it was harder to get a nice circle without it breaking. The reason why you make a crackling on top of your shoe, it's optional, but it's to make this beautiful crackly texture on top of the shoe as it bakes. So the crackling needs to be bigger than the shoe if you want it to cover the whole thing. 
So I thought it would be a fun thing to do. But yeah, it's so much fun trying out a new recipe because you learn so much, especially with pastry, because everything is very precise. You need to develop the right feel. Otherwise, you won't know if your dough or your cream is ready. And it's a type of knowledge that you only gain through experience. Next, I had to do my crème pâtissière, which is what I'm going to fill my shoe with. It went well until the end. <laughs> so I had this great idea. I was like, mm, I'm going to modify this recipe. I'm going to infuse it with some orange peels. So it's like vanilla and orange. It's going to be nice. And also I did the same thing with my crackling. I put some orange zest in it. So I thought hopefully there's going to be a light orange flavor. Um, we'll see. We'll see if it works. So I did that. I had just enough cream for my my can and I did the, the whole thing. I whisked the thing and then I thought the texture was really good but it said when you see the first bubble when your cream starts to boil you cook it for 30 seconds and then you stop cooking it. So I had the perfect texture I thought but I didn't see any bubbles yet. I decided to wait a little bit more until it started boiling but it never did. Instead what it did is my cream separated the all the I think the butter that was in it separated or I don't know what there was like these clumps and the, this liquid and I was like oh no all that effort and I have nothing to pipe my my shoes with <gasps> I was desperate but turns out that you can salvage your cream when it does that you take your pot you put it in a bowl full of cold water and then you whisk, 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 whisk very vigorously and then it's, it comes back together. So, so I'm so glad it did. I salvaged it and now it's in the fridge. It needs to cool for two hours and then I can do the final step, which is to fill my shoe. Anyway, whole adventure. And I haven't even done art today, but it's, it's something that I've wanted to try for a while and I think I'm going to attempt these more intricate bakes from time to time and just get better at it. Now it's 3.30 p.m. The light outside is starting to dim already so I think I'm just gonna work at my winter station so with my lights. I started another painting, another Nunavik north of Quebec landscape and this one is a bit different than the others it's separated in three parts it's like three very distinct parts and there's no body of water in there and I think it's my first one without any water the top part is the sky and then you have this the middle part which is like bushes and the mountains in the background and then the front part the bottom part which is like the foreground is mostly moss and some rocks so I thought that this would be something different to attempt and a challenge for me because I want to find a way to make the foreground interesting because there's not a lot of color variation in there so I thought the challenge was overdue trying something different I haven't shown you the sketch for this one and I've already started applying the color but I'm not well I would say I'm halfway done with the color so I'll show you what I do Now is the time to uncover my pastry cream, which as I explained to you, I kind of messed up at the beginning, but it turned out perfect in the end. So I use my piping bag again, fill it up with the cream, so good. I didn't taste the orange flavor that much though, but I guess I'm just gonna have to practice some more. And this is the biggest surprise that I found when I cut the shoe. It was empty in the middle. 
I had no idea it would be empty and I've always wondered how people were able to pipe a shoe because I didn't know it was empty. So I did the two different techniques, the one where I cut the top of the shoe, put some cream in the middle and the one where I just did a small hole in the bottom of the shoe and piped it from the bottom. Somebody told me I could also pipe it from the side, which I'm planning on trying next time. And it gave me about 12 or 14 shoes and they were delicious. And here is the final product. I've been using this white so much, so I think it's time to just pour a little bit more. I'm using M gram titanium white. It's a gouache. It's the only gouache I'm using in this palette. I think I'm due for a palette reorganization because as you can see there's colors that I have barely touched like this black, this one here. Uh, these I have, I refilled them a few times but I think, you know, I don't need this white, I don't think. Be a future video. So here's me a few days later. I decided to try some sourdough focaccia for the first time and it was so good. This is the most satisfying part when you knead it with your fingers. That's how you create that bubbly texture and I can't wait to do it again. When that was done, I topped it with some salt, some olive oil and some rosemary. I think next time I want to do a pizza focaccia. So I want to put some tomato paste, some cheese. Oh, it's going to be delicious. And here is the focaccia right out of the oven. You can hear it sing. So beautiful. And now before I let you go, I just wanted to show you a little close up of the painting you saw me do. I know that I haven't shown you the final result yet, so here it is. I love how it turned out. I'm super happy with the bottom part, with the moss and the lichen and the rocks. I like how the colors blended together. I hope that you enjoyed this shorter video. Um, let me know if you like my baking stuff. I personally love it, so I would really like to continue to share it with you if that's something you're interested about, so let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in two weeks. So take care and see you soon.